What's up, family? Let me know, let me know, let me know how, how the sound is. Let me know if you can hear me. What's okay? up, family? Let me know, let me know, let me know how, how the sound is. Let me know if you can hear me. What's up, family? Let me know. Stop the echo. Echo gone. Okay. Racist, lowdown, dirtbag, stankin', hateful, evil, wicked. John William King is no more. Round of applause. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. One for the winning team, man. One for the home team. Score one for the home team. Hey, y'all, if, you, if, you, if it's your first time on the show, let me know where you're coming in from. What city? What state? If you're outside of the U.S., let me know what country you're representing. I'm going to give out some shout outs, and then I'm going to go in on the scumbag. Yeah, you want to skip the line. YouTube got a feature on here that allow you to do a super chat. You can skip the line and get your comments heard right away. Leon Robinson, what up Leon? Leon, round of applause. That's what I'm talking about, man. Damn, I wish I could have been there. Man, I would have bought me a ticket to see that execution. Man, yeah, man. Some of them, man, you can't do nothing about, man. Some of them just don't belong among the civilized. They have no place in society. Just nothing but pure evil. They got to go. He was one of them. Yeah. What's up, next level? No more talk to that racist trash. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. Handle your business the state of texas handled their business today handle your business texas y'all know that's our motto don't mess with texas he found out the hard way john william king found out the hard way don't mess with texas yeah what's up san diego mopar doc robinson detroit in the building What's up, Doc? Slow burn, 77. What it do, Oakland, California? Y'all forgive me, I'm a little hyped tonight. I'm a little hyped, man. It's just one of the best days of my life, you know what I'm saying? You know how you had those good days in life where some, some days just go better than others? This is one of those days for me, you know? Good news, you know, I heard the good news when they said, when they told me that the judge had denied his stay of execution, I was like, man, that's a good judge. And I was trying to find a judge's address to send the judge a gift, you know, just basically a thank you gift, you know, a little sign of my appreciation, you know? Yeah, man, get rid of their asses. They can't be reformed, get rid of them. Yeah, oh, here we go with this. TJ666, two wrongs don't make a right. Well, what a second wrong. Where's the second wrong? I saw the, I know what the first wrong was. Tell me what the second round wrong is. Because I agree with that. Two wrongs don't make a right. So where's the second wrong? Explain to me. Peyton, the great, says you should have shot him. I agree. Texas need to bring back gunfire. Dead by execution by what they call the firing squad. That's what Peyton basically said. Peyton said they need to bring back the firing squad. Yeah. Don Parks, Tampa, Florida in the building. Baton Rouge checking in. 
What's up, Chad Barnes? Electric chair, that's good too. Eugene Osborne. What up, Eugene? Yeah, I personally think that uh I, I personally think when they when when they do execute the the person that uh, if you do something like really, really dirty, low down, like I think that would have been a good way for him to die. Like I, I think he it would have been cool if he'd have got dragged, if they had dragged him. Y'all hold on. I got a Boyce Watkins calling me right now. I'm gonna see if I can drag Boyce into this discussion. Boyce. What's up, man? I'm 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 on I'm on YouTube Live, man. You know, I, I know you probably call about something else, but won't you jump in this conversation with us? Oh shit, yeah, man. Sure. <laughs> All right, I, okay, I I, I I just put you on speaker then. All right. <laughs> hey y'all, this is my homeboy right here, Boyce Watkins. He just called me. I don't know what he was calling about, but I but I just I'll get back with him later on that. Uh whatever whatever it was, you know, we'll make sure I make sure that uh we 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 connect on that. But right now, boys, we are celebrating the death of John William King, who was executed in Texas today, dragging a black man. For, for the reason of being black, James Byrd Jr. And I know you're familiar with that case out of Jasper, Texas. And what are your oh, thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, man, I mean, you know, it, it, it's one of those situations where you, you kind of like, wait a minute, did that happen? And, you know, in, in what was it, the 20, 2014, 2015? I, I can't, you know, the, the fact that stuff like that still happens in this day and age is- uh, No, that happened in 98. It, it was 98. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was, uh, I, for some reason, I thought it was just a few years ago. 98. But either way, man, it's still kind of like, well, first of all, what the fuck? Why did it take 21 years to kill him? That's right. the first question I would ask. Right. But then the second part is just, you know, it just reminds us what we're dealing with. You know, that racism is not, uh, you know, I was dealing today with a situation, man, in my hometown with, with this young kid that, that was dealing with some cops, man, and he was a good kid, you know, real good student, you know, all of that, no criminal record, no nothing, man, and he's, and the, and the, the DEA officers, like, eyeballed him, he stopped in the store to get a slush, you know, kind of like that Trayvon went to get the Skittles, mm -hmm. and the DEA cop just looked at him funny, but then they followed him for a couple of miles, and the kid was scared, man, you know, so he called, he called his mother, and had his mother on speakerphone, you know, he was just 18 years old, mm -hmm. and they, I mean, they just violated all his rights, like, they said, can we search your car? He said, no. And they searched it anyway. They had the stinky ass dog climbing through the car and everything. And it's just kind of like, you know, when you think about the threats that exist for the black man, you got, you got the cops, you got, <laughs> you got the racists, you got the government, and you got other black men trying to kill you, man. It's, it's like there's a million and one ways for black men to die, man. So it's it's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. You you know a Bond B got his home invaded. I don't know if you know about that, but no. Bond bon B had a home invasion yesterday. He shot the uh, intruder, and uh, wow. yeah, so that sucker is in jail. That's a twenty year old black male. Oh, man, that's yeah, man. We got a lot of work to do. You know, I, I think, and it really that reminds me why uh, I respect our friendship so much, man. You know, like, and yesterday I was talking to another guy. Respect, you know, David Banner, you know, he came through. With, Absolutely. And, it, and it's just one of those things where, you know, black men really have to uh, protect and defend of the good, strong black men. You know what I mean? Solid guys that, that just kind of, you know, I think have a code and kind of understand that we're at war. And uh, and so the reason I reached out to you, man, the reason I support you in every way that I can is because I can tell just from our first conversation that you kind of live by a certain code of honor. And I think that as we establish that honor amongst Black men, uh, you know, we use that to defend our community, to defend each other, because we got enemies on all sides. Mm -hmm. what, what's your position on the death penalty? Oh, I don't, I don't fucking care. I mean, shit. <laughs> some people need to die. You right. know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't even understand why people act like death penalty is such a bad thing, man. It, I mean, it's kind of weird, right? Like, we'll, we'll feel guilty.
guilty about killing somebody who killed somebody, but they don't feel no guilt about all the black people that they killed over the years, you know, with the cops and everything. They don't care about all the brothers dying in the hood. They don't care about babies wow. starving to death. You know what I mean? Like, huh. like it, it's, it's really weird how they can be so sensitive on one end about something they shouldn't be sensitive about, but not, not give any fucks about the things that they actually should care about. Wow. Huh. Talking to you hypocrites out there. Y'all seeing all these black men innocently getting innocent black people getting killed left and right by police. But y'all opinion, oh, you cop apologists. Uh, everything is an excuse. You got an excuse for everything. You're gonna try to shape the narrative. But when it comes to a guy who actually killed somebody and that and he's his life is on the line, now is all of a sudden two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah, yeah, we know you, we know you, we watching you right now. This, this is what we're talking about right now. This dude, like you say, he was alive. They kept him alive for 21 years. To the day he died, he had no remorse. They said he had a tattoo on his body of a black man hanging. Wow, you kidding me, are yeah. you serious? Yeah, he had a tattoo on his body of a black man hanging. Damn. Wow, man, that's, you know, I, one thing I don't understand about racism is I do not understand who, who taught these racist white people. I'm not talking about all white, I'm talking about the racist ones. How did they, what, how do you, what person do you have to be to hate somebody that much and you've never even met that person? You know what I mean? Like, like I never understood that when I would look at stuff in the 1950s and I would see white people spitting on black kids trying to go to school and saying, you know, nigga, get out of here and all this other stuff. I was like, who taught you? I mean, you got to be trained to hate somebody at that level to the point where you don't, I mean, you don't even, I don't even know you and I hate you as if you've done something to me. Like that, that's really a mental illness, man. It's, it's very strange. Here's my theory on that, boys. I believe that the white racists in this country, the, 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 the hateful people in this country, I do believe they hate because the government has sanctioned hate. The government has said it's cool to hate and you can get away with hate. You know, like America from day one has been a bully. This is a bully culture. And that's why bullying in schools is so prevalent. That's why it's so pervasive in, 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 on the job. That's why it's so pervasive in every facet of life you dealing with bullies. On, at school, you're dealing with principals who are bullies, teachers, coaches who are bullies. You're dealing with students who are bullies. You know, you have a bully educational system. People are brought up to bully. And so when people become bullies in the workplace, when they become bullies, uh, you know, in a, like in a, in a public uh, a forum or whatever, uh, people start acting shocked, but they, these people have been trained to be bullies. Look at the president of the United States. He's a bully. America bullied her way to the top. America has always been bullies and racism is one of those bullying things that if, if you're white and you ain't got shit else going on, you got racism. You can always rely on racism and you can always rely on being able to bully people to make yourself feel good, to make yourself feel a little bit better about yourself. And I, so I believe that a lot of these people be bullying because first of all, first and foremost, they have low self-esteem, you know, they're ignorant, you know, so, and, and, and they're heartless. So because if you think about racism, if you think about the reason they hate, most of them they hate based strictly off the, the color of a person's skin. This person ain't really done nothing to them personally. Like James Byrd Jr. did nothing to that dude personally for him to take, to extract that type of vengeance. He just was hating the dude. So if you, look at, if you look at the things in our life that really makes us who we are, who shapes our conviction, what shapes our convictions, it's usually the people, the household that we grew up in, it's the people in that household, it's the people that we go to school with, it's our neighbors, it's our family members. If you are white racist in America, if, you, if, you are, if you're part of that white extremism, if you're part of that so-called white supremacist, white nationalist, that means that you really hate people based off the color of their skin. But think about the things that hate that that makes us who we are, that really shapes our convictions, that really gets to us. The person that 
abused you when you were little was probably that probably looked like you. The person who broke your heart probably looked like you. The person who fired you probably looks like you. The person who chased you home from school probably looks like you. Or the person that stabbed you in the back, that friend that you had that stabbed you in the back that makes you not trusting of others anymore probably looked like you. The person who stole your money, the person, person you loaned the money to and, and didn't pay you back and y'all broke up the friendship and you and it pissed you off to, to such an extent that you just don't trust people anymore. That person probably looks like you, but you don't hate those people enough to want to kill them because of all the shit they did to you to fuck your head up. You don't hate them enough to do that. Why? Because your stupid ass gonna run out of people to hate. That's why you don't hate them. Because in your I, mind, because you're thinking like, well, damn, uh, I can't hate them because that's my family. You know, they did me wrong. Yeah, my, my yeah, my daddy raped me, my uncle raped me, but but that's my family. So he looks like me, so I can't hate him. If, if I hate him, I can't say I hate all, all white people because I'm white. You know, I know what they did to me is harsh. And it was harsh and it, and it hurt me and it messed my head up. But I can't hate white people because I'm white. So, but oh, look at them. I can hate them because they don't look like me. I can hate them. So this is what I'm saying. I just think, I think the whole idea of people that hate people based on just the color of their skin alone. And even black people, you know, we got colorism going on in our, in, in our culture. You know, even those people, I just think they fucking ignorant. Mm. Well, you know, man, I, I think that uh, you're right on point with that. You know, and I think about when you talk about bullies and the bully culture. I mean, if you look at the history of the United States, the United States got all this power by being a bully. You know, uh, we have, you know, half the world hates this country because the country operates like a bully. You know, if you, if you got oil and we need oil, we will come and we will overthrow your government and kill a million people to get your oil. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They, you know, they kind of just bully their way into whatever they want. And I think that it sort of feeds into that white supremacist mindset of saying, you know, I have the right to do whatever I want to do. My, you know, I mean, after all, I'm a white man. I'm not going to be held accountable for anything. You know, and I think also when you're talking about uh, this idea of hating people and taking your frustrations out on strangers, you know, I, I don't know if you remember when Liam Neeson, uh, the, the actor, was yeah. talking about that. Yeah, yeah, where he said, you know, that he, his friend got raped. So he said, I was looking for any black man to, to beat up and kill, you know, just anybody, you know. And it's it's, it's like, uh, you know, it, it basically what I think a lot of racism does come from is, uh, and Hitler did this, Hitler did this with the Jews, where what you do is you you convince people, like you convince loser, you know, loser-ass white man that every problem he has is because of black people. You know, mm -hmm. he, he ain't got a job, it's because it's cause that nigga took your job, you know. He, can't, you know, his woman left him because she, she wanted to sleep with a black man. She, you know, most of the time that's true anyway because everybody want a black man. You know, uh, you know, if you if, if you can't get moving to a better neighborhood, black people live in that neighborhood, then, you know, they shouldn't have anything more than you. So so that anger just builds up. You know, there's mm -hmm. really very few people in America more angry right now than, uh, than white males. Yeah. You know, because I think they feel kind of marginalized, left out and everything else. They, they've always felt a little bit of entitlement. Uh, so basically, the way a group gets uh, marginalized like that, that, like with the Jews, Hitler just basically kept telling everybody, all your problems are because of the Jews. It felt like by killing the Jews, they were killing their problems, when really we know that, that, that that's not the case. So for black people, we are the Jews of America, and instead of killing one bad leader, you know, like well, we know Trump's a bad leader for black folks, but he, but, you know, so, so maybe he's kind of like our Hitler, but we have something worse. We're not dealing with this one bad leader, we're dealing with an entire 200 something year old system that really is our Hitler. So, our Hitler is, you know, has lived to be 250 years old and, uh, and it ain't going away no time. Yeah. And, and speaking of Lim, you know, with his thing, think about this. He said that, you know, after his white friend was raped, she, she said by a black man, right? We don't even know if that's true, but she said by a black man she was raped. So he want to go out and extract vengeance on any black person, indiscriminately extract vengeance against any black person, period, any black man that he finds. He want to kill him. But had it been a white man who had raped his friend, he wouldn't have been going out trying to find, a, a, pick a fight with any white man and kill any white man. 
So it goes back to what you were just saying. He had already been conditioned uh, to, to, to look down on black men, to look down on black people and feel, in, uh, to feel superior to black people and to feel like black people were the, their problem all along. That's their problem. So now, you know, any little infraction that a black person, you know, uh, creates, then, oh, you want to take it out on everybody. So it's amazing how when a white, when a white dude does some dirty shit, uh, i.e. Uh, shoot up a school, he's a lone wolf. He stands on his own merit. But when one black person does something, oh, they want to attack the whole black community, the whole black nation, everybody, everybody got to take a hit. So, uh, but, and, and I know black people that when they see things, certain things happen and, and a black person does something dirty or low down, or whatever, they cringe because they, they be like, oh man, I hope it's not somebody black. I don't, I don't think that way. To me, that person, he stands on his own. He stands on his own merit. And you know what he eat don't make me shit. So whatever he, whatever that whatever his ass did, he got to deal with that. That's between him, law, and his God and his family. I ain't got nothing to do with his shit. And if you think I do, you the damn fool, not me. Yeah, yeah I don't. I don't think racism. Racism is not black people's problem. You know, like we can't we can't make a racist not be a racist anymore because that, that's their mental illness. Um, and I think you're right. I think a lot of times we feel like we gotta we gotta get 40 million black people to all behave so white people won't think bad about us. And, you know, yeah. and a lot of that comes from the fact they can't people can't see us as individuals. You know, right. I mean, if, if Boyce goes out here and does as something human stupid, beings, yeah, right. And, you know, Boyce does something crazy. Like, why would you blame Willie for what Boyce did? You know what I mean? Right. You know. So I think that overall, it's like. Uh, you know, when they see us that way, a lot of times it's, it's a lot of times it's people that maybe just don't have that much experience with black people other than what they see on TV or what they hear from their friends. And so they, they'll they'll kind of connect one person's actions to everybody and blame everybody. And, I, and, uh, and, and really, again, that type of ignorance, I don't think black people should have to carry that burden. You know, I think we have the right to be human beings. Uh, we have the right to be smart, to be dumb, to be tall, short, rich, poor, crazy, not whatever it is you know that that reflects the diversity of of human beings you know human beings are different you know and so uh really i think if you really think about the battle in racism what well, black people i believe one of the things we've been fighting for for 200 some years is just the right to be human just fight for our humanity you know which goes back to when we used to be seen as three-fifths of a person you know and we used to be seen as property you know we used to be seen as animals you know mm -hmm. and if you look to this day if you look to this day the black man especially the black man is still not seen as a human being. He's still seen as a vicious animal. You know, they, they that's why they get shot by the cops. That's what you do to an animal that needs to be put down. Right? We're not seen as a full human being. You know, we're, we're seen as a commodity. You look at what they do with us in sports and they and they, and they can't make money off of us and they, they have no value for us. You know, look at the penitentiary. They, they were still property in the prisons. That, that is still in the Constitution. That's why black men are more likely to be incarcerated than anybody else and, and no greater place for black men to get locked up than Texas, which happens to be a place that also owned the most slaves too, right? So it's all connected, right? So so people, I think, have to really, you know, the biggest frustration I think with, with, with the, the, that really think we made a whole, all this progress is that you got to understand, like, because you have not done a cleansing, you have not done a full healing, you have not done a full acknowledgement of what's been done to black people in this country, you're still carrying all the symptoms that your ancestors put in this country when they built it up for you in the first place. And that, and that's something I think we got to work for, you know, as a community, you know, is get our humanity back. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the great Dr. Boyce Watkins. Man, thank you for coming on the show. Impromptu, like, you know, I know you wasn't prepared for this, but you stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. So, you know, I don't feel too bad because I know you had a, Oh, you had a load, loaded gun ready. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. You know, I, I'm trying to be like the great Willie D, you know, <laughs> one of the greatest performers of all time, one of the greatest black men ever. And I, you know, and I agree with you. You got to always be ready. And I think the best that the thing I respect about you most and, and, and certain other people that I just, you know, just uh, have the highest regard for is that we're not pretending like this is not entertainment. This is not us getting on YouTube trying to get likes and shares and like, like this is what we believe right and i think this is the best opportunity in the history of this country for black men with, with strong voices intelligent black men who want to work together to reach the masses 
and uh, and teach manhood. We need our manhood back. You know, because I don't know if you saw Morehouse is, is changing. I'm not going to, you know, you, I'm sure you saw that. Where they, did you see that with Morehouse? Man, I'm about to see it as soon as I get off this live. Oh, yeah. Morehouse is now you know, admitting like transgender students and, and women that identify as men. So you can go to Morehouse if you're a woman. Like at some point, there will be a pregnant Morehouse student out there, right? And and, and I'm not telling people if that's right or wrong, they can make their own decision. But what has always been uh, in existence is an assault on black masculinity. Mm -hmm. You know, they do not want the black male to be strong and masculine. And, that, and that's why sticking together is so important. So I'll let you go look that up, man. And, and I appreciate you just, you know, uh, having me on the show. And and also, I want to invite you. You know, we're doing the black, uh, the All Black National Convention in Houston in September. And uh, that, that was a business I want to talk to you. When you get a chance, man, I wanna, I'd want i love to make a partnership or something so you can invite your people to come through. And, uh, of course, uh, I'd like you to come in as a panelist, man, so we can talk about that and uh, figure out how to make that work. So that, that was yeah. the reason uh, I reached out to you today, man. Absolutely. Y'all say, what's, what's the date? Uh, the weekend of September 27th, and we already got the venue and everything. It's gonna be right there in Houston. So, uh, you know, I can't. Uh, I feel like I can't do. So, I can't do nothing in Houston without talking to the king of Houston. And as far as I'm concerned, man, you know, you're the king of Houston. So I'm in your city. So I'm showing that respect. So I, you know, I appreciate you considering uh, coming out and, and uh, hanging out with us that weekend. I appreciate you, man. Boys, Watkins, y'all. I'll be there. Y'all save the date, September 27th. September 27th, and uh, the URL is allblacknationalconvention.com. All right, King. All right, homeboy. Talk to you soon, man. All right. Peace. Boy, Watkins, ladies and gentlemen, my dude. Boys be on it, man. He be on it. He just dropped an earful on us just now. Thankful for that, man. He necessary. Whoa, let's get back to the chat room. D-Low, 404 Boxing, the second round, taking so long to get around <laughs> to getting him out of here and taking care of him for all these years. Real talk. I 100% agree with that. And so does Paul Mitchell. Appreciate y'all, man. Real talk. Let's get back to the chat. What y'all saying, man? What y'all saying? What y'all think about this? Racist. Low down scumbag. Dirty dog. Mutt. John William King is no more. The world is a better place to live in now. Be out of here, dead. Texas, the executioner took care of his business. He earned his money, earned his paycheck today. 7.08 p.m., he checked out. This was, a, this was an avowed racist who orchestrated the murder of James Byrd Jr. In one of America's most gruesome crimes of the 20th century, to kill him today, 44 years old, threw his life away. That clown, that clown was like 20, I think. No, 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 no. He was like 23 when he dragged James uh, James Bird. He was 23 years old, and he was the ringleader. They pronounced him dead by lethal injection in the Texas penitentiary in Huntsville, about 45 minutes north of Houston. Took care of the business, man. Business done, taken care of. They asked him whether he had a final statement, and he said no. And then he wrote out a single sentence stating, capital punishment. Then without the capital, get the punishment. So. In your case, so sucker, you have been knowing that. But you thought your white skin was going to save your ass. But it didn't work out like that this time. I like it when it don't work out for them. You know, a lot of times they get away with a lot. But man, when they don't get away, it's always so shocking. Just so shocking when they don't get away with it. Boy, I bet you if he wish he could take it back, he would have taken it back. But he know he wasn't going to beat that execution. He know he couldn't beat that execution. I, I'm usually not for the death penalty because I understand, man, that there are people, especially black people who, who get accused of murdering people all the time and they get railroaded by the system. And, I, and that is a number, of, I'm sure that's, that, not sure, but I know that's countless of black people that have been murdered through the years 
who were innocent, who were who had been murdered by by way of state sanctioned executions. So I understand that. And that's why I had been against the death penalty for so long. But I just believe that when it's just an overwhelming amount of evidence and you got a confession and you know you got all of that on top of it. I mean, you got like just 100% proof. This the dude right, that's his ass right there. Man, pull the trigger, execute him. Man, I wish I could be an executioner. I wonder, can I sign up for the job? Cause they don't execute every day. I ain't gotta be there every day. I ain't lying, y'all. Y'all think I'm playing, I'm gonna look into becoming an executioner. I wanna be an executioner. I do it. I do it for the people, of course. This clown, John William King, was the ringleader of the group that chained Bird when he was only 49 years old. And this was back in 1998. He chained him to the back of his 1992 Ford pickup truck. And he dragged him for over three miles in the woods outside of Jasper. And his body just shredded. When he finally stopped, the body was just, pieces of his body was just, was everywhere. And, you know, they had to, they had to scoop him up, man. It took him a good while to, just to find all the body parts. Uh, so this dude, uh, was ex executed along with two other guys. Uh, one of the guys was named, um, what was this guy named? Um, Lawrence Russell Brewer. He was executed in 2011. And Sean Allen Berry received a life sentence. So these three dumbass clowns threw their lives away. They hate, the hate was so strong strong, that they just threw their lives away. Now the Aryan nation, where was the Aryan nation when they asses was getting executed? Where has the Aryan nation been for them the time that they spent on death row? Where has the Aryan nation been for Sean Allen Berry? Has the Aryan nation taken care of his family since he's been gone? Did, it, the Aryan nation made sure his kids got, got to school and, you know, they were all right. They had the little, they had all of the necessities they needed, plus the extras. Did the Aryan nation do it? Did the Aryan nation step up to take care of his parents? Hell no. Nah. That's how those gangs operate. They ain't gonna do nothing for you when you run out there and do a dummy ass move in the name of your gang. And I don't care what gang you in. Some of you out here listening to me right now, you you're part of something special. When your ass get caught up, you're going to be on your own. Yeah, if you're out in the streets doing dumb shit and, and everybody fighting and clowning and acting a fool, yeah. You know, yeah, they, you're going you're gonna to have each other back because that's just, that's human nature. That's, you, you're, in a, you're in a survival state. So that's just natural instincts. But you give a fool some time and sit back and think, damn, if I give him this money, I ain't going to have no money. If I give him this, I, I can't go down there to see him, man. I ain't got time. I got. I barely got time to do take care of my own business. I'm gonna take care of his mom. I can't even take care of my own mom. I'm gonna take care of his wife and his kids. I can't even take care of my own. I'm having trouble taking care of my own. Or I, I can take care of my own, but if I take care of his, I ain't gonna have nothing extra for my own. Especially you poor white dudes out there with that hate in your heart. Man, y'all better stop letting these damn rich white boys pimp y'all. The elite white boys are pimping y'all and y'all falling for it like straight up suckers so he did say one thing right when he when he made his final statement i, I gotta give him that i'll give him that he said capital punishment them without the capital get the punishment that's the way it is asses out of here yeah, man, I got my homeboy, 
Matt Zanzali in town today. Matt came in from Austin. I'm finna hook up with Matt. We're gonna get some drinks. In fact, I think I'm gonna go to my home bar restaurant, The Real. Uh, Real, and I think we're gonna go to Real. We're gonna have some drinks, man, and celebrate. We go to Real. No, 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 no. We ain't gonna go to Real. We're gonna go to, let's see, why wanna. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna call him and come over to the house. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we just gonna do it at my crib. We're gonna have some drinks. We're gonna have some drinks and, and salute, celebrate, man. Let me hear what, let me see what y'all are saying right quick. I gotta shut this thing down. Let me see what y'all are saying. David Burden, yeah, it happened. He did, dumb mother. You know what? Yeah, that boy gone. That boy taking a dirt nap. Boxing conversations with Reggie Owens. The investigation into Bird's murder was lackluster by the ja ja Jasper police. It wasn't until the new Black Panther Party showed up that they solved it. Hey man, whatever it takes. You know, at the end of the day, it got done. You know what I'm talking about? At the end of the day, the arrest was made. His ass to trial, he got convicted, and he went to prison, and he got sent to the death to death row, and his ass got executed, and he's finally met his maker, the devil. Yeah, burn and piss, sucker. Yeah, who else want it? Yeah, Joseph uh, Salsa, say, uh, Salsa says that he uh, represents Shreveport, Louisiana. He says they need to drag his stinking ass body through Jasper for old time's sake. <laughs> Real talk. What up, J.B. Smith? Go Hunter. Have some beers on me, man. Thanks. Yeah, for real. I'm with it. Appreciate you. Man. Yeah, that would be that would have been nice. I think that would be a nice gesture. I also heard that none of his people showed up. Nobody even showed up to to watch him be executed. Not not. I'm not saying they want got, got to be to watch him die. They want to, they, they, some type of pain freaks, but just as a show of solidarity, some type of support. He had no support system that was well. Nobody there. Now that's reality. That's the same reality that, that, that gang members get every day. That's the same reality gang members wake up to every day. That, 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 that reality of isolation. If you go out there and do all that dumb shit in the name of the gang and all that, man, your ass going to be on your own. going to be out there on your own when it's all said and done. Man, I'm about to put on some victory lap and go, what can I run at this time of night? Uh, I go to the gym. I go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, man, I want to take a victory lap, man. Well, that ain't, that ain't really bad if I, if I go to the gym, get on a tread, damn, that don't feel like I'm going nowhere. I need to, I need to take a lap. I need to do some of this. <sighs> Well, I'll wait till tomorrow. I ain't gonna do it tonight. I'm gonna take a victory lap though. Titus Thompson say, OG, I'm wired up over this. Real talk, real talk. Another racist bites the dust. One down, at least a million more to go. Nah, yeah, at least a million, but more like what, 30 million, 20 million. How many voted for Trump? And then you add some from the Democrats. How much, how much, how many is that?
That's what y'all Democrats better wake up to. You got them Democrat racists, you got them racists and white liberals. A lot of white liberals are racist also. You gotta think about what I'm saying. Where were they when these uh, Republicans, these conservatives is doing all this, passing all this legislation and stuff like that, and these cops are killing black folks, where are these white liberals? Where are they? Where 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 is these where are the Me Too's and and all of these these women organizations and stuff like that y'all be trying to support? Where are they when it comes to police brutality? What where are they? Are are they speaking on this on these issues? I don't think so. Terrence uh, Lacey, what's up? What's up, man? Yeah, you know, like it, it's not all. Like I say, it's not all, but. There are a lot of white liberals who are racist and they get a pass just because they identify as a Democrat. I'm not telling you this so you can go run to the Republican side because that's the last side any black person should ever find themselves on because they don't even try to hide their racism. They flat out covert with it. I mean, I mean, they, I mean, they, they flat, flat out uh, overt with it. They ain't got no problem with it. Christopher Jornet. Is Jornet or Jornet? It took that long to kill that B. S. They should have dragged his ass around the country. Salute Reggie Owens. Real talk. Yeah, uh, that would have been nice. They could have just hooked him up to the back of the truck and just drug him around the United States. Well, he wouldn't have been nothing left, but. Maybe what they could have done is wrapped them up in something like maybe some, I don't know, how could you make it? How could you preserve it to where time you take the last stop, then ain't nothing left but the head and then it just fall off, ding, 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 you know, like a little ding, ding, ding or something. You know, look, or you hear a little something like that. There's gotta be a way to figure that out. But yeah, that would have been nice. That would have been nice. Joss Bro says, burn in hell. X space, X space C, uh, X space Y, X. Hope he rots in hell. You know what I'm talking about, Mike? Michael Johnson <laughs> with boxing talk and more says, Bun B pop the dude. And we got a good old execution. Shout out to Texas. You know what I'm talking about? Texas winning the night, man. Man, it was, Texas winning the night. Rockets lost yesterday, but man, Texas rebound. I bounced back as gangster. Bum, pop the sucker. And we got an execution. We, got, we executed a good old boy. Oh, yeah. Got us a good old execution. Yeah. Nice. Nicely done, Texas. Nicely done, Texas. So Claude Baker, what it do? Who the huff? Jordan, 13, uh, 1834, Memphis, Tennessee in the building. Fidelia K, what's up, Fidelia Silver Springs, Maryland. Love, I was out in Silver Springs, when was that? Uh, it was probably about five months ago. Nice place, beautiful trees, landscape, beautiful. Yeah, so another racist bite the dust. John William King is no more. He's no longer a plague, a thorn in America's side. We don't have to look at his face anymore. We don't have to hear his voice anymore. He's going straight to hell in a hand basket. Today was a good day in the words 
of the great Ice Cube. Today was a good day, y'all. It's a day that will go down in history, in American history, as one of our better days. Oh man, God is good. No more talk.